Hey guys, welcome to a new video. In today's video, we're going to look at lead code problem and the problem's name is find if array can be sorted. So in this question, we're given an array which consists of positive integers called nums. And in one operation, we can swap any two adjacent elements if they have the same number of set bits. So set bits means the number of one bits inside that number. And we are allowed to do this any number of times, including zero. It means it's not compulsory to do this operation. If you directly have the sorted array, you can return true as the output directly without doing anything. It means you did zero swaps. And finally, our task is to return a boolean value true if you can sort the array using the above operation, else we have to return false. So let's take this example and see how we can form this output. So I've taken the same example as example one and see how we can form the output. So it's saying that we have to, we can only swap two adjacent elements only if they have the number of set bits equal. So for every number, let's write down the binary value. So 8 can be written as, so let's take the 8421 code. So set 1 wherever you need the sum. So 8 can be written as 1000 and 4 can be written as 0100. 2 can be written as 0010. 30 can be written as, so let's take 16 here, 11110. So add all of the set bits. It will add to 30 and 15 can be written as 0 1 1 1 1 and inside this the number of set bits are equal to 1 and inside this the number of set bits are equal to 1 inside this the number of set bits are equal to 1 inside this the number of set bits are equal to 4 and here also the number of set bits are equal to 4 so if you want to swap two elements these set bits should be equal so for example these two have the same set bits so these two can be swapped now one more important thing is that you can swap any two adjacent elements and we have to sort the array, right? So this gives an indication that it is similar to bubble sort because in bubble sort you compare two adjacent values and then swap those positions. We have to implement bubble sort using two loops. So i and j loop, i will start from 0 and j is also starting from 0. So let's write the limits. i will start from 0 to length minus 1 and j will start from 0 length minus i minus 1, right? So this is going to be the bubble sort. So we are going to use two for loops using O of n square time complexity. We have to add additional check that if the set bits of those of those two elements pointing at i and j are same, only then we can swap. So here if you read the explanation, first we are going to swap 8 and 4. Since both of them are going are having same set bits of 1, we can swap them. So let's swap them. So 4 and 8 is swapped. And like in bubble sort, we keep on doing that until this element reaches its uh, position. So again we can see and now 8 and 2 are also having the same set bits of 1. So we can swap these two. So swap these two. And now we can see these two are not sorted. Check if those two are having same set bits. 4 and 2 have the same set bits of 1 so we can swap them. So swap these two elements. 2 will come here and 4 will go here. And finally these two are also not in their position. So check if they have the same set bits. Both have same set bits of 4. We can swap them. So 15 and 30 will be swapped. And now we can see the entire array is sorted. So using these operations, we can sort the array. So we return true as the output which is expected here. So now let's implement the same steps in a Java program. So we'll write a helper function. I'm going to name it get set bits, which will take an integer and return us how many bits are set that is the count of ones and this function I'm going to implement using bubble sort and place this check on i and j elements. So let's take a look at the code. So here we are implementing bubble sort. We are taking two outer loop and inner loop i and j checking if, if the element pointing at j is greater than element pointing at j plus one and we are checking if the elements pointing at j and elements pointing at j plus one are having the same set bits. So this is the helper function which will return us the number of set bits for an integer num. So this will give us the least significant bit that is the rightmost bit of a number and adding it to the count. So if this is equal to one only, this one will be added to the count, right? And then I'm and then shifting that digit so that we decrease the size and this for loop will run until the num is not equal to zero. And finally we return count which represents the number of set bits. So only then here we are swapping. So I'm swapping it using a temp variable like we do in bubble sort. And then finally, after performing bubble sort on the input array nums, we are checking if the array is sorted. So if the array is not sorted by checking if uh, the current element is greater than its next element to the right, we can return false directly. And if the for loop never returned false, we come out and return true. It means that 
the array is sorted. So here in this case, it will return true. So that is the output. So the time complexity of this approach is O of n square because bubble sort uses two for loops. The space complexity is O of 1 because we are not using any extra space to solve this question. That's it guys. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.